We're continuing our coverage here at the Minds and Money Conference in Toronto. And with me now is Patrick Loftus Hills. He's the managing director for Molis. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's good to meet you. Good to have Very you nice on. Nice to meet you too. We're going to talk mining. We're going to talk gold. Uh, it's been an incredible year uh, for gold and the mining stocks. After many had discounted it last year. Let's start by looking at the metal with you. How do you see it positioned here? The, the gold price and, and metal. Well, gold price is very interesting at the moment as we saw uncertainty is good for the gold price. And when, for example, with Brexit, the uncertainty that was created by Brexit created a, an uptick in the gold price where I think it was the highest it had been in two years. And we're coming into a period over the next two months where there could be a lot of uncertainty around the US election. And I think that that uncertainty as to whether we're going to get a change of the political party that runs the country, what that means and how that uh, factors into risk for people is going to be incredibly um, interesting. And I think there is a real chance that the gold price moves substantially higher as a result of that uncertainty leading up to the election and potentially even post the election. Now, Patrick, you're a speaker here at the show at the Mines and Money Conference. Uh, let's look at the mining sector. As I mentioned, mining stocks up by a huge percentages this year. Yeah. Do you think that they're well positioned or do you think more needs to be done here? Look, I think it's just the start, to be honest. I think it's a start from what was an incredibly low base. I think one of the things that happens in the mining industry, um, and you've seen it over the cycle of many years, is that the lows are very low and the highs are very high. Mm. And they're unsustainably low at times and unsustainably high at times. We've been through an unsustainably low period of commodity prices flowing through to equity prices and debt prices as well. And as we've come off the bottom of that since uh, February, March of this year, sure, we've seen very significant hikes in bond prices, equity prices, and followed, that's followed the, the rise in the commodity prices. But there's a lot more to go because to go back to a normalized level will require a, quite a significant rise. I mean, if you go back five years, you'll see prices were, you know, five and ten times higher than what some of the equity prices are now. So what are the risks facing the miners now? Yeah. I, think, I think there are still a number of miners that are over levered. They have too much debt um, and one of the key themes for miners right now is to reduce that debt to take advantage of equity markets as the equity markets reopen. They're reopening right now. Take advantage of that, reduce the debt, clean up the balance sheets but also clean up the asset bases and I think that's what's going to happen. That's sort of the next step now that people are in the mode of being able to do deals and both mm. on the financing side and on the M&A side. So I sense your bullish gold, still bullish the mining stocks here. Does that make you bearish on the uh, global economy? Um, no, I think, I think you need a strong global economy to have a strong mining industry. I think you need to see China doing well. Um, not only doing well because they actually do well most of the time, it's that they're perceived to be doing well. Five hundred, you know, six and a half percent growth is still significant growth. Um, we need that to be in the industrial sector for mining, and I think we will continue to see that. I think that uh, China will continue to grow. I think, you know, the, yeah. the world really is is growing, and the U.S. is growing, and I think as as that sentiment comes through, and it is yeah. coming through yeah. over the last six months, we're going to see quite yeah. a significant rise. It's, it's a much better picture than it has been for the last three uh, years. Absolutely. I was going to say that the Change sentiment the at this conference is much more optimistic, much more bullish than covering a mining and gold conference, you know, three years ago. Oh, absolutely. And people are back on the horse. They're, they're wanting to engage. And I think people here at the conference have wanted to engage. They've wanted yeah. to hear what's going on. Um, we've done a lot of restructuring over the last couple of years, as I said, and, and I spoke about that in the, in the conference. And one of the things I said was, we've come to the tail end of that, and the restructurings we still have um, that have been debt-focused because of commodity price. Um, all of those have now coming through and being completed, 
and that com those completions have um, have happened much more rapidly than we would have expected a year ago. We've been able to close deals in a couple of months rather than over a period of a year because people can see the improvements. We've been able to raise equity like with Kenmare Resources uh, where equity was raised to replace debt and I think we're going to see much more of that. Patrick Loftus Hills, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very and much. And thank Daniel. you for watching our coverage here from Minds and Money. We'll have more for you so be sure to stay tuned to Kiko.com. Thank you Patrick.